G'day YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear Shed. I'm standing behind our little 1954 TEA20 here and the last video that I put out after months of playing with this tractor, um, as in you know, new engine and all that sort of thing, we actually got the engine running. So we started the engine, it, it, look it just fired up yeah, really well, I, I've got to be happy with that. Now, what we're going to do, we've never brought out a video on splitting a TE20, a TEA, TED. Um, we've never brought out a video on splitting one, doing the clutch. I did a video way back on pulling a, um, pulling a pressure plate apart and having a look. But that tractor is still up in the pallet racking, we've never put it together. But on this one, on this 1954 TEA, we're going to split it, we're going to replace the clutch, we're going to have a look at the rear crank seal, and we're also going to go back into the front of the gearbox and have a look at the main input shaft seal on the TEA20. So it's going to be a good fun thing. It's not a hard job, it's, it's quite easy. It should only take you a couple of hours well, not even that. I can have these apart in about an hour flat. But anyway, it's going to take us longer. I'm going to show you what I do along the way. There's a, there's a few things we need to talk about straight up. Um, uh, and a lot of it's about safety and, and a little bit of common sense. Disconnect your battery before you start. Now, as soon as you get the bonnet up, you don't need to take the bonnet right off like I've got it off for this. Um, you can just prop the bonnet up and get to what you need to. The battery, now, whichever terminal on your battery goes to earth, disconnect first. So if you're running an original positive earth system, pull your positive battery terminal off first before you pull the negative off. And if you're running a negative earth system, pull the negative battery terminal off first. And the reason is, if the battery's still hooked up and you've got your spanner in here and you're jiggling away like buggery and that spanner shorts out on the tank or the dash or the battery carrier or something like that, you're going to have sparks. You, you just don't want that. So there's no need for it. So um, disconnect your battery the very first thing you do. <coughs> Pardon me. Now, make yourself a couple of wooden wedges. Now, Make them out of soft pine, not hardwood. And the idea of that is these go in, and when I put them in later, I'll, I'll take the camera and show you. But um, I'll, I'll give you a measurement on this one. I know this one fits, but that's, what are we looking at? Six inches long, 150 mil. And it's only a bit of oh, 45, which is inch and three quarter. And the big end is two and a quarter. The little end is five eight. So that's just and, and look, the measurement of that was just I got the saw one down. We whoop, up the up a bit of stuff. Didn't measure it. Didn't need to. So so make yourself two wedges. Now these knock in under your front axle and between your front axle and your front axle carrier. So knock them in first. And the reason is, <laughs> I've been doing these tractors for years, and the reason is, when you wheel the front end away from the back end or the back end away from the front, it doesn't matter which, when you do that, as soon as it comes apart, one side of the engine will be heavier than the other, and it'll just go clunk over on an angle like that. It doesn't even matter if you're ready for it, it gives you a fright each time. And when it kinks across like that, if you have a jack under the sump, or um, uh, it's only the engine that'll turn, not the back end, because the back wheels are fixed. Um, when it kicks across, if you just have a jack sitting under your sump, which is something you shouldn't do, um, it can kick and slide off and you're buggered, away you go. So you, you've got to try and pick that tractor up then, or um, when you come back to assembly, you've got to get a few bars involved and try and line that engine up again to line it up with the gearbox. So we know it's lined up now. If we knock a wedge in each side, when we go out, 
and come back in, we know we're going to be really close to lining up. Now, <coughs> pardon me, I just covered on the jack under the sump thing. Do not put a jack straight under the sump of your tractor and probably not under the back end either, really. Now, the reason is metal on metal can get slippery. Um, the sumps are just alloy. You're just as likely to go through it and crack your sump. But if you get a small piece of timber, something like that, and look, it, it, it can be three-quarter inch, you know, 19 mil or anything. But what happens then is you jack on the board here, the load goes across a far larger area of your sump. The other advantage of using a little bit of um, wood between your jack and your sump is it can't slip. The, the irreg irregularities, just a big word, um, the irregularities of your sump will push into the wood here and your jack will push in on the other side. So that will stop your jack sliding out and about. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, with the discussion about whether you wheel the front away or whether you wheel the back away, look, <laughs> just do whatever you feel like doing. It doesn't matter, it doesn't change the job. <coughs> Pardon me. On this particular job, I've got a trolley under the front and a trolley under the back. I've got a Sparex splitting stand set up that I bought, wasn't sponsored, but look, it's just the duck's nuts, really. And me splitting tractors, playing with tractors in Bundy Bear's shed, I can justify having one. If you're going to split the tractor twice in your whole life, don't get one. Um, it's just not sensible to do. But... Um, when you're jacking the tractor, just be careful, try and keep everything at line. And you just want enough that when the front section and the back section come apart, they don't go bloop or bloop or, you know. You just want to support it. You're not jacking, jacking it up. They only weigh a little bit, these tractors, but. Um, so I've got two splitting stands under this. Now, if you are using a jack, a bottle jack, something like that, put a safety stand around it there somewhere to, um, and the idea that is if you let that jack down your safety stand will take the weight and in doing that if you have a jack failure it's not going to end up on the ground and possibly on your foot or on you or something like that. So use jack stands, I'm not here because I have actually, I've got wind up stands that can't collapse. Um, back to the front versus the back, <laughs> splitting it. A lot of people, a lot of the old boys go to the back. Now, the advantages of going the front are you have a lighter thing to push, you have a couple of little wheels here, you can put a bar under them and lever them out and they should be okay on most tractors. Little Fergies are a bit different. The advantages of pushing the back, uh, you have a bigger rolling radius in the rear wheel. You don't have to worry about the wheels changing. Now, you'll see later on, on the TE20s and other tractors with a radius rod down each side, you undo normally, you undo the radius rod at the back and fold it back out of the way. Now, I have seen people undo them at the steering box and then they swing the radius rod out and they wire them to the radius rod. But what happens with the Fergies a lot is when you wheel the front away you've got two wheels with a mind of their own to a point and even if you uh, I tried strapping it to the radius rods and look it, it works better than not doing it that's for sure but you still end up with a bit of toe in or toe out or something like that with wheeling the back away you know you have a bigger rolling radius and and you can you've got something to really get into and and you know give her a, give her a real old heave ho Make sure it's in neutral, probably, hey? <laughs> and the brake's off. So I think that's all I need to cover on that. You don't have to disconnect the fuel line, so we don't have to drain tanks. You don't have to... Oh, if, you, if your tractor has a temperature gauge on it, mine doesn't, lucky for this job, but if you have a temperature gauge up the front, you will need to undo the temperature gauge, swing that back 
to the back out of the way. Um, don't kink it. Those temperature gauges, they have a little capillary tube, they call it, and they, there's, a, there's a wax plug at one end and alcohol in the middle. And um, if you kink that over, that little capillary closes over it. It's just kinked off like kinking the garden hose and your gauge is toast, chuck it. So if you have a temperature gauge, you'll need to be undoing that. Now, that's about the basics. You don't need to drop the back end oil. You can do the top seal without getting oil everywhere normally. Um, <laughs> the funny thing is, this is completely a side note. This tractor, we started it last week. It's a week later now, and my linky jams are still up. I can stand on them and they stay up. But anyway, we're going to do it up because we, we, that's what we do. But um, yeah, and I, I let the lever down and yeah, she went down and settled again. So bloody unreal. Must have the best hydraulics in Australia, within Cooey anyway. So that's just an overview of what we're going to do. Um, the, the plan is to put the camera along each side and show you what you need to undo piece by piece by piece. Now, through the week, I come up to the shed through the week and I've started splitting it. I've undone a lot of things just so, like little fiddly things like the choke rod, so you're not watching me try and get in there behind the car with a set of pliers and pulling that bugger of a bloody little pin out. Um, I've, done, I've done bits and pieces around it just to try and have the video flowing on. So. Look, stay tuned, we'll have, it'll be one video to split the tractor, maybe a video for the rear engine seal or, anyway, we'll worry about that later on, eh? Yeah, too much buggering around, Lance. So, what I'll do, I'll bang my axle wedges in, I have no battery in this, but remember, battery off first, very first thing, axle wedges in, just go and make them now. Go on, <laughs> and I'll wait. <laughs> I'll put your axle wedges in, <coughs> and that will make your life a hell of a lot easier. There's a couple of things at the front here I'd like to show you first up, and you'll notice these bolts on top of the tank. They're the bolts that hold the back of the fuel tank on, and I've also loosened the front of the tank. And the idea of that is that when I split the tractor, I can just lift that up a bit, pop a little bit of wood in there, and support the tank. So when we're coming down, when you come back together, your tank um, won't be hanging down where you're, where you're trying to get the tractor together. It'll be up and nice and clear. The other thing I'd like to point out, and look, I've got my little shifter just because I know people don't like it, is, is undo your little clamp here on your governor. Now, people get all worried about that governor. You don't want to change the governor setting. Well, you just got to. And so don't worry about that. When that sits right up high and this little lever with the spring on it comes up and touches the shaft that's that's the dash position for fully full idle on your tractor so you can see if i if i pull the lever halfway down and flick that up there and tighten it up that now has become my my low throttle position and that's not where you want it so when you bring that up, that's right up as far as you can push it, or as you bring it down a little bit. But, and then later on I'll tighten it up there, but we'll cover that when we go back together. But for the moment, undo this fella. Now, it's just a little U-bolt down underneath there. And I've loosened this one off, but looks like it hasn't come enough really. And when we split the tractor, this shaft will slide back out of the thermostat housing there. So <clears throat> be aware of that. But yeah, don't get worried about where this position is. The position of that with this, with the horse, with the kink bar resting up against this shaft here, that's where you want to be. Um, and you want to be there when you go back together with this in the full home. Or I, I usually bring it down just to... Well, what's that at the end there, just to give you a measurement? Like half, three quarters of an inch, I bring it down, then do it up. But look, that's, that's neither here nor there. Okay, we'll drop the camera down lower, and we'll have a bit of a chat about some other things on this side.
Okay, just for the purpose of this exercise and to show you about this rod here. Now, when we split it, this radius rod here, I, I like to undo the back here and the footstep comes off. There we go. And this swings out of the way. And it can swing back and forth a little bit, the, the lower radius rod here. Um, what I like to do with the tie rod end is, with the tie rod end sitting in the steering box, I like to undo the front. This is just an old one I have hanging around. Um, I undo the front, then I fold this up back, and they can both go back up there and rest on the seat. They're out of the way. Um, yeah, easy. Um, the other thing I was talking to you about was if you undo it at the steering box and leave it hooked up at the front here, when you bring this out, you can slide this out and strap or wrap or wire or use your favourite bloody thing and um, your farmer's friend, a bit of fence and wire. Um, Bale and twine. Hey, everyone likes bale and twine. So, with this out straight, the pivot is very much the same there. You can bring this out, strap this tie rod in a couple of places to it, and that will stop your wheels going like that as you come out. So, it's up to you which way you do. Um, I've taken it off completely. Well, not taken it off completely. Because of the videos, I've never put it on, <laughs> on this tractor. So, <clears throat> I haven't put them back on, but... You do need to do that. Now, ages ago, I put a video out on how to undo these. And what I do on the back here, I put a piece of flat 10 mil steel in behind the steering arm, start undoing the nut, then just give it one smack there and she pops out. Same on the front. You can loosen the nut back off against a plate and one smack on the arm here and it's gone. So, <clears throat> so you need to deal with these one way or another. It doesn't matter how you do it. Um, yeah, you're, oh, better get me shifter. <coughs> you're doing the job, so it, it's however it suits you. Now, there's a couple of little bolts in behind your um, inlet tube here. I might just pick the camera up a little bit. Okay, now, what you need to do is draw a line in your mind between the engine block and the bell housing. So you look at a line straight up through here. Now, anything that crosses that line, you must deal with in one way or another. So we've spoken about the radius rods. We've spoken about the steering rods. Now, we can see an air breather for the engine. I've undone that, so that will stay there. That's unhooked, that's no worries. I've undone the clamp on the carby and loosened the clamps on the pipe here and I like to grab this out of the way and by taking that out of the way it gives us access to this bolt here. Now there's a bolt here with a clamp on it for um, the fuel line so the fuel line sits in that little clamp there the, yeah, so you have to deal with that the throttle rod that comes over the front, we've dealt with that, we've undone that at the front now. The fuel tank, the only way we can deal with that is undo the bolts at the back. Now the exhaust, if you have a downswept exhaust like mine, I don't have anything, I don't have a muffler on that, I just put that on there for a start. So often it's best just to undo the bolts here, let that come down and out of the way. If you have a, an upswept exhaust, you don't need to deal with it. Um, some of the upswept exhausts on the elbow, they had a little bracket coming down to here. So on the carby, there's a little choke rod. You need to undo the split pin in the choke rod and push the choke rod back out of the way. And it will just sit out the back there, no worries at all. And the wiring. Now, I haven't got everything hooked up on my tractor, but there'll be a couple of wires at the back of the generator on this side, so they have to come back, back out of the way, and just, just put out of the way somewhere.
so so they're not in your road when you're undoing things. And once we've dealt with everything here, the fuel line can stay. We don't need to pull that apart. But once we've dealt with all the bolts here, um, well, look, uh, not all the bolts. There's a bolt here and a bolt here, one above and one below the radius rod. They are the last ones I take out. So I've undone the, sump, the bolts at the back of the sump. I've undone this one here. I've loosened this one. I've loosened, there's a nut and a stud up under here where the wiring harness goes through. The, um, I've undone that on my tractor. You don't need to undo throttle linkages to the carby, they can stay put. It probably won't hurt to put a little bit of masking tape over the carb here, just so your wasps and <laughs> mud dobbers and things like that don't build in there. And um, on this side, that's just about all you need to look at. And I'll probably try and find a little piece of wood or timber of some sort to sit under the tank just to lift it up so when we come back and forth, we're not bumping into this bracket on the, on the battery box all the time. Right, so now we're around the left hand side as you sit on the seat and there's a few things we need to deal with here. Now, one of them is a wire that will be coming down here onto your starter motor. Undo that here, fold it back out of the way, that's all you need to do. If there's an earth wire from your battery coming down to one of these screws, undo that, get it out of the way. Now the, <coughs> the oil pipe, it has, a, it has a little bracket next to the oil filler here with a half inch spanner fits it, it's a 5 16th bolt. So I'll fold that bracket out of the way and just put that bolt back in a couple of threads. Then down the bottom here, I undo the banjo and that oil line can easily come out of the way now and <coughs> when the tractor goes forward it doesn't get caught on the oil filler here. Now once again I can undo all the bolts around here. I just noticed it was out of frame down the bottom end of the, of the shot when I was telling you about these bolts but one above one below the radius rod. Um, the radius rod at the back here, yep we can just see that. This socket comes off now, one thing I didn't mention before is if that front axle pin is really worn badly, sometimes you undo this and the whole axle goes whoop up and that gives you a fright too. Don't have your head down there in case it comes up and clips you under the chin. That wouldn't be nice. It'd bugger up your good looks. So on this side, there would have been a wire coming from the wiring harness down to the ignition coil. So you will need to undo that and the battery one that I've already mentioned. Everything else, so from this stage here, all your wires, your voltage regulator and all should be sitting back under, um, out of the way, without a worry. Now, <coughs> I'll drop down, if I can. I might go handheld for a minute. And that's my setup. I'll just zoom out a bit. Um, I've got this Sparex stand now. Look, I've... I, I have it, I, I love it, it's just a great thing. If you can afford one, get one, but it's a bit of a waste if you only do one or two tractors ever. But um, whichever end you're moving away, you need a trolley of some sort and you need to jack the other section. If you're, you can see the angle, the yeah, angle iron, right angle frame down there. Now, if you have a trolley jack or something like that and you're on a dirt floor, Having something like that, or look, I've, I've even split them just on a bit of steel, just a bit of flat plate on the floor um, in my life as a field service fitter. So make your life easy. If you're on a concrete floor, it's not so bad. But if you're on a dirt floor, make yourself up a little rail or something. And I have seen these angle iron rails turned upside down with the pointy piece up and a couple of cast V pulleys as wheels that sit on the top. So it goes out and comes back. But look, that's... That's a different story again. While we're handheld, I'll show you the axle wedges knocked in here. So that's the one on the left hand side. This is the one on the right hand side when I get it into frame. 
What you couldn't see before because we were out of focus was these two bolts here, top and bottom, and there's that top bolt for the fuel bracket. So we do, we'll undo this and we'll just leave that bracket there. You don't have to disconnect the fuel line at all and you don't have to undo any clutch rods or anything like that. Okay, I will poke along forward with this tractor. I'll come back just as I'm ready to wheel it apart. As you can see here, I've got the tractor starting to come apart there. And you can see little, little air gaps through there. So what I look at at this stage is I adjust the stands under the tractor to try and keep that gap fairly even. And if you have that even now, it may make life a bit easier later. And another thing I'd like to point out is on that bolt there, see the white stuff on the thread? And on this stuff here, this bolt here, they should all have it. And because you have a, a steel cast here onto an aluminum-based, magnesium alloy-based housing there, those bolts, without a little bit of... Um, well, I use a thing called Duralac. Um, the bolts can, from galvanic corrosion, seize in. And I've seen tractors with this bit here sort of grow onto the tractor. Now, originally this had a gasket around them, like they had a, a very thin paper gasket. And a lot of them don't have that now, it's long gone, but um, <clears throat> that paper gasket was to stop galvanic corrosion. So the... the dissimilar metals reacting with each other. So on the bolts, with the steel bolts going into the um, magnesium alloy housing, they put some of that on as well. Now, tractor shops do not know about this stuff normally. Go to a boat shop, a marine shop, and they, they will have a little... Uh, look, the stuff I use looks like bare cement, bare contact cement, and you just put a little bit on, screw it in, and that just gives you that slight corrosion resistance so be aware of that now most of the bolts around the housing have a washer of some kind on them minor hit and miss like this one didn't have one here and it didn't have one on the other side here but down here it had a that's what's left of a, an exhaust bracket that would have come up to support an exhaust elbow I believe and the ones on the alloy didn't have them but I don't know why now whichever axle you're not rolling away, chock it. Make sure you put a chock front and back of the wheel so that when you, so that when you um, try and push the tractor, you haven't got the tractor trying to come with you, the, the bit you don't want trying to come with you. And when we come up to the governor housing rod here, see, I, I, this hasn't been on that long, and that's nice and clean. But if you undo this and get this little governor bracket out of the way, Make sure you polish this shaft with a little bit of emery tape or something like that. And I usually put a squirt of oil on it. And that there, it depends. It depends on how much the tractor has been used and how much has sat around. But if, if this housing's in good order, the, the throw out, the throw out, the thermostat housing is in good order and that doesn't slop around in the governor shaft support there, well, polishing that shaft up will make it go out and in a lot easier. So take the time to do that. Another thing I'd like to mention is I actually undid the pipe on mine. You can see where the stand is coming down the side there. It was putting pressure on that pipe, so rather than break anything, I chose to take the pipe off. Um, that's about it. We've got, the, we've got its radius rods there spread. We'll sneak around the other side for a look on my very trusty workshop stand. I nearly liked a big time, eh? <laughs> well, probably nothing like it, but anyway. Once again, on this side, there's a dowel in here on each side. That's why it's important to try and line things up if you can when you come back. I'll, I'll show you a couple of little tricks for when you come back to try and get it lined up. Now, whether you take the starter off or on, I will end up taking the starter off this after it's split, mainly because the Bendix housing comes out through here. Now, if you see a TE25 
20, a T-E-A-T-E-D, with this long housing here. You know, originally out of the factory, it was a 12 volt tractor. If this housing is just a little short one that ends at about 100 millimetres, you know that it was originally a 6 volt tractor and it's had a, um, it's had a different starter put on. But, but with that long extension, if you have a look on the 35s and all that sort of thing, they all have that long extension on the bell housing to allow for the Bendix drive to go back. And also, while we're talking about starters, this is a 12 volt starter. The bolt holes are further apart than a 6 volt. So we get people in from time to time and they've, had a, they've got a 6 volt housing here, a short housing. Then they've gone and replaced their block with a 12 volt block. And on that, <laughs> on that 12 volt block, they go and get the 12 volt starter. Or this, on a 6 volt housing with a 12 volt engine block, I'll get it right sooner or later, there's no room for this Bendix to come out. And I've actually seen them with a hole drilled and sticking through. So look, just some... Just something to think about, you know, it's got absolutely jack shit to do with this job, but I just thought to tell you while I was there. Okay, I'll set the camera up on a tripod now, and I'll try and show you wheeling the back away from the front. So, I've got the chocks there, I've got my axle wedges in. Don't be scared to check your safety things half a dozen times. Um, yeah, checking that and taking two minutes is way better than spending the next two hours picking the bastard up. Okay, I'll set this up and we'll come back shortly. Okay, here we are. Let's see how we go with this, eh? Now, we've had a good look around again. Um, I do need to... I'm, I'm thinking the shaft will just come out at the front here and that'll just pop off. Now you can see it's following me back a little bit. That's only for a little while. I'll pop a bar in there and... Give it a bit of a help. I've still got a screw. If you reckon you've split at tractors and you've never left anything done up, you're bullshitting. <laughs> I often leave a safety bolt in just for safety's sake and then forget about the damn thing. Okay, that's looking good that side. That's looking good this side. Now you can see the front wants to come a little bit, but look, there's no big deal. So we're just clearing there. So just go steady, don't rip right into it. The throttle linkage is at the front here. Um, it should pop off by now. Hang on, I'll just... There you go, the throttle linkage is off, so this should come down and out, no worries. I'll get a little bit of oil and put on that shaft, that's something I hadn't done just yet. And the shaft is polished, so that's nice. Now the oil line, I'm making sure the oil line's clear here, and it is. Make sure the brakes aren't dragging. So we're coming out nicely. Boy, the old ring gear is a bit dicky. I think we'll show you how to put a ring gear on, eh, when we do the job. Um, we'll just see. But that's looking good from this side. Now, I'll just check this throttle rod's coming out. It's nearly out. I'll just kick these little chocks out of the way. back I think the tyres at the back I probably should have pumped them up a bit more anyway we'll work it out give us a big heave ho
was starting to get in the way. We'll go around the other side now. <laughs> Stuck again. And you can see we've gone a little bit crooked there, but it is hard not to when you're just pushing on one wheel. If you've got two people, it does make the job easier. And you can see also down the stand here, it's sliding on the stand a little. So I've got brackets to put on that, so I might put them on going back together. But we'll take it back as far as we can. I've got a tin. I've got to keep moving this tin back all the time because it's um, it's <laughs> the PDA pours oil out. So but look, that's looking good. Oh, hit that throw out. Bring this oil can around the back out of the way a bit. <laughs> Hear that break? <laughs> that was a break. Just dragging a little bit. Okay, look at this. God, now what do we do? <laughs> okay. That's the end of the splitting the tractor videos. Um, I hope I get everything in frame. I couldn't see. I've got the camera a fair way away just to try and get it in. And, and normally I have the camera close where I can see the little monitor. So let's hope it's in there. So that's splitting the tractor. There's not a lot to it. It's not a big job. Not a scary job anyway. So from here, we'll start working forward, I think. I'll probably just take the starter motor out of the way. That's a new Sparex starter. I'll probably take that out of the way and we'll start working towards doing the rear engine seal.